All right, thank you very much. Let's have a short prayer as we start. Father, we thank you this evening. Thank you for another opportunity to be together to have a lecture. As we go through, we pray that you will be with us and help us to fully um, accomplish the aim for this course. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. All right, so um, we, we are going to start with it and this is a portion of the lecture note that I'll be giving to you uh, soon. Okay, so uh, first of all, we need to uh, look at some basic concepts in uh, design. Right. Oh, 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 oh. We are looking at this machine design, machine design one. And in the university, our department, we have various stages of machine design. It's because the uh, topics to be uh, looked at are very many. And so they've been categorized to various uh, aspects. So this is the first stage that we are going to look at. And the first thing that we need to know or find out is what is a machine. Because we are going to design machine. And we need therefore to define what a machine is. If, if we are able to do that correctly, then the uh, Please mute your microphone. I bet they will mute your microphone, please. Okay, so we need to define what a machine is. And the simple definition that we can give to a machine is that it's a device for transforming or transferring energy, right? It can be an apparatus which consists of interrelated units, which are called the machine element. All right, and um, a device that can modify force and motion, okay? So you have a particular force. The force may be in a certain mm -hmm. direction, but you could change the direction of the force or the motion could have a certain direction. You could change it. You could transform the, nation, the motion. Maybe it's rotational motion. You want it to be in the form of a... Uh, uh, it should be in the form of reciprocating motion. Uh, to transform that rotational motion to reciprocating motion, we could use the machine to do that. Okay. And um, machine design is the art of planning or devising new or improved machines or system to accomplish specific purposes. And um, in general, we can say that the machine or the system will consist of the combination of several different elements properly designed and arranged to work together as a unit. So when you see a typical machine, it's made up of different elements or machine elements, okay? And each of the elements may be having their specific functions or specific purpose for which they, that, that they will be playing uh, in the in the overall working of the machine, All right? And without the presence of some elements, some may not work. Some of the machine elements are dependent on other ones, All right? So uh, there is a need for the individual uh, elements of the machine to be designed. Bell, mute your microphone, please. All 
Okay, so there is a need to design the various components or elements of the machine. And during the initial planning of the machine or the system or system fundamental, uh, cons fundamental considerations need to be made about the uh, kinematics or the kinetics of the machine element. All right. And that is done in order for you to be able to come out with a design that will be able to work to accomplish the purpose that is supposed to be done. Okay. And uh, uh, also the correct uses of the properties of engineering material is necessary here because uh, the machine, all the elements are going to work together to accomplish a certain task. And it should ensure that in the course of operation, all the elements will be able to function and perform their various duties. So they would not, they would not fail. Like if, for instance, the machine is being designed to be able to, uh, let's say, carry some load, okay? There will be some stresses built up within the elements of the machine. And therefore, the material used for the design needs to be considered so that when these elements are subjected to such stresses, they don't fail prematurely during the operation of the machine. And uh, it proposes a sound knowledge of engineering science, engineering graphics, system engineering, engineering economics and environmental uh, science, because uh, all those things that is being designed, they are going to be used in the environment and they have to be consideration of the effect of the machine on the environment. And then also economic consideration are usually of prime importance when the design of a new system is undertaken. In general, the lowest overall cost is desired because uh, that thing which is being done, for instance, is, is being done to be sold, okay? And therefore, the, the cost, the overall cost of the object has to be considered. It doesn't make economical sense uh, uh, to, to use that machine or to buy that machine. What is it going to be used for? And if you pay so much for it, is it worth it? And therefore, uh, usually, as design is being done, no matter what is being used for, the designers or the engineers need to ensure that they, they are able to uh, lower the cost of production of that machine um, as to be as less as possible, right? And the consideration should be given not only to the cost of design, manufacture, sale, and installation, but also to the cost of serving, right? Because as the it's been it has been designed and is going to serve a purpose, uh, it, it has to be considered that when it's being used, it wouldn't cost so much. Are we okay? For instance, uh, if you look at vehicles that are used, automobiles. The engine has been designed and it's within the vehicle to move the vehicle. But also when it has been designed, from time to time, you see that engineers are trying to improve the efficiency of the engine. And the essence of it is that we want less water to be consumed when the engine is in operation. You are getting it. So assuming that when the engine is uh, serving its purpose, uh, the, the fuel that it consumes is so much at the end you see that the operating cost of the engine is going to be very high but assuming that we have very less consumption then means that the operating costs will be which will be beneficial to the user so that also has to be considered okay a machine should of course incorporate the necessary safety features and be of not only sufficiently designed to function properly for a reasonable lifespan, but at the same time, reasonable price to become economically affordable to the target uh, to the target market, All right? So as you are designed, in, in design, there may be uh, is, uh, some cases where a machine may fail, 
but we have what we call fail safely, meaning that even if there's failure that may occur in the machine, it is safe for the users of the machine that no life is lost or nobody is injured in the process. Okay, so all those things have to be considered, and of yes, course be uh, the, the need for the designer to ensure that the machine is affordable to the targeted market. And the knowledge in machine design uh, enables engineers to formulate their own philosophy about the system in question, to gather data and organize the methodology needed to proceed from product conceptualization to the release of the final product. So there are various stages that the designer need to go through uh, or the design the, the machine have to go through in order for it to come out as a final product. So first of all, the engineer or the designer will have to need to have a conceptual idea of what he or she wants to do. And that comes in by knowing the problem that ought to be solved. Okay, so we'll look at the various stages of that, how a part of a machine could be designed for it to serve a certain purpose. Any question up to this point? Any question? Uh, okay. Any question? Okay. Um, yeah, do you have any question? No, sir. All right. Um, types of mechanical design. The mechanical design, we can categorize it into um, one, and we, we can categorize it into three, okay? And then uh, these uh, three components are the new design. We have what you call the development, design. Then we also have the adaptive design. So a new design is when a product is being created from the scratch, all right? And it's done through the application of scientific laws, technical ability and creative thinking. So one have to sit down and try to imagine Right, have a concept of what he or she wants to do and start from the in beginning to come up with all the parts of the product that need to be designed, okay? In terms of sizing them, material selection, and then the, the aesthetics of the machine or the product that is the beauty of the product to ensure that it will be ergonomic for people to use, easy to use, and user friendly, let's put it that way. And also, that person will need to be able to come out with a, a, a proper um, description of how the manufacturing of the product ought to be done, All right? So from the beginning, con having the conceptual idea of the product, and developing it through the various processes until the product is manufactured and released to the market. Right, so that is the uh, new design. And it needs a lot of research skills and daring, right? One have to be daring and take some certain risks to be able to do it. It may be involving because something new that is being done and may also be expensive. The most important thing a new design is the creativity. So here, one is uh, being creative. So you are sitting down to be able to come up with the uh, the the the, the uh, product that you want to be manufactured. Okay. So in that case, um, you are the designer or the originator of the product. And if you are the originator, then it means that uh, you are being creative. You have to be somebody who can think outside the box, somebody who could imagine. And if you are able to do that, have those skills, then 
you'll be able to come up with something nice. And that is why most people develop such things and then they will patent it because they take it as their original idea. They, they, the idea originated from their minds, all right? And only those designers with personal qualities of uh, sufficiently high order can take up the work of a new design. And such design generally can qualify for a patent, as I said earlier. And uh, as engineers, uh, upcoming mechanical engineers, this is what we have been trained for, to be productive and creative, okay? Not just sit down for uh, somebody to be telling us what to do, do this, do this, do that. But for us to be able to do things by ourselves, to imagine things and to bring it into existence, all right? And then we also have the development design. And this also needs special design related training and skills, considerable knowledge and skills and the ability, all right? You need to have the ability to do it. Although the design is start with existing design, the final product is distinctly different from the existing one in terms of the material, the costs, and then the functionality or a different method of manufacture. And it, it therefore leads to a major modification of an existing design. So the design may be there already, but in this case, we want to modify, change certain uh, characteristics of the design to make it more efficient and better than it, it used to be. And uh, you see, uh, most most uh, products on the market, they are like that. For instance, if you take vehicles, uh, uh, cars, for instance, you see a model every year, it's like a new model of the same vehicle is being released. So we have that development design. So it's in series. So this one is done. The next year, some modifications are done to it. The new set is released and it's like that. And most of the time, the new ones that are coming on board are better than the previous generations, okay? Then uh, we also have the adaptive design. It concerns with the adaptation of existing design. The design, the designer makes minor alterations or changes in design or product to suit the requirement. Minor changes usually in the dimension of the product of the product. It needs no special training or skills. Such a design can therefore be completed by someone with minimal design skills. That is the adaptive uh, design. All right. Um, then um, depending on the method used, design may be classified as empirical design, industrial design, optimum design, system uh, design, rotational design, computer aided design. Look at the other ones, okay. So let's look at the empirical design. And this type of design depends upon empirical formula based on uh, the practice and past experience. So empirical design based on some empirical formulas or practice or the experience of how something has been done or uh, the experience of the designer in the past or his experience in using uh, certain uh, machines or products, this empirical design could be done. So they are based on some practical experiences or uh, based on practice, all right? So practice something that is already being done. So it's not like a, some something virtual that out of nowhere you just decide to do something though but it's based on what has already happened or what we have already been actualized then we also have the industrial design this type of design depends upon the production aspect to manufacture any machine component in the industry right so here it depends on the Yes, we want something to be produced. 
and we manufactured. It doesn't matter whatever it is, that machine component that we want to manufacture in the industry, if that ought to be done, we go through the process of production design. So in this case, the various stages of design where we have to have the, um, in terms of knowing what the design is going to be used for, the product is going to be used for, sizing the product, doing some calculations and all that, and having the shape and everything of the product is done, and it goes through the various production stages and then the product is manufactured. And we have the optimum design. It is the best design for a given objective function under a specific constraint, okay? And they achieved by minimizing undesirable effects. That's what you call the optimum design. So optimum, in this case, um, in design, you may have different ideas that may come into your mind as you are starting, you are starting the design uh, project. But these ideas, some are good, some are not so good. So oh. it's like going through the various uh, design concepts that you have, then going through it, you try to uh, reduce what is not desirable, right? In the various design that you have, and then coming up with something that is the best of all the aspects. Are you okay? So one may start with one design, then he'll be improving on it. So he looks at it that this one though, it's having the corners are too sharp. There is so much stress concentration at one point. How do we relieve the stresses at a point? And then modification and changes to the initial idea until a better product is obtained from all the uh, ideas that were already available. Then we also have the system design. It is the design of any complex mechanical system, like a motor, a car, aeroplane, and many other uh, machines that are there. But that one is a system, and the system, in this case, a complex mechanical uh, system, in the sense that, for instance, if you take the uh, aeroplane for instance there are many things that comes together to make it an aeroplane for it to be able to fly okay the hydraulic systems are there if you take the hydraulic system alone there are many things we have valves the fluid the pressure uh, holes or the cables inside and we also have some pipes here and there certain mechanism that will control the flaps of the plane and all that for directing the plane okay then uh, if you take the electrical system so there is there are also many things that are there in the electrical system and then if you take even the engine of the of the aeroplane it's also made up of different different things for it to be able to function so such a complex thing is what we call the system so that is in designing such we have the system design and then we have rotational design. This type of design depends upon mathematical formula of principle of mechanics. That is the rotational uh, design. So in this case, we are depending on mathematical formula to be able to come up with the design. Then the computer-aided design depends on the use of computers, computer systems. All right, so that one is there where we, the computer assists the designer to be able to to do with apart from uh, drawings uh, where we have computer graphics and all that there are many other things that goes into it in computer aided design the drawing is one aspect of it there are aspects where you can optimize the design by using the computer systems where you can do stress analysis and other things using the computer system all will help in order for you to have a better uh, product at the end. Any question? Why me pair at the load of the load in the Any question? So what's the difference between the empirical design and the digital design? The difference between the empirical design and the rotational design. The rotational design. Okay, so here. 
Yeah, what we say the rotational design, we are depending on uh, mathematical formula for the design. All right. Empirical, I mentioned that we are looking at certain experiences, all right, something in practice, some experience that somebody have had. Are you okay? So in this case, if if let's say uh, we have, uh, let me say that, let's take something physical, all right? Let's say you want to kick a football, eh? Are you there? So kicking the football from one point yes, okay. to the other. Uh, one, you have seen people kicking it. If you are kicking it, how do you move your leg, your foot, and then how do you position it? What's, what is the initial distance between your foot and then the ball before you kick, and then the motion of your leg and all that? So in such a case, if you are to design some machine to be able to kick the ball, the design is based on the idea you have of kicking the ball already. Are you okay? So in that case, is it may follow the same principle of how you are going to use your leg to do it. And you may have, based on the movement of your leg, you may derive some empirical formula that can uh, help you to be able to come up with a design. A design will be able to conform to how it is done practically. Are you okay? And then we also have yes. a mathematical formula, which is based on mathematical uh, formulas to do it. That one is not uh, a practical one. It's not based on experience, but some formulas that have been developed mathematically to be able to uh, do that design. Thank you, sir. Okay, so um, let's look at uh, design procedure. Design procedure. When a new machine or its elements are to be designed, no rigid rules uh, can be specified for the designer to follow. Okay, it's subjective, it's based on the individual. The problem can be solved in many ways. There are many ways that a particular problem could be solved. However, a designer may proceed as follows. So these are some guidelines that you may follow. Though it's not rigid that you have to follow it at all costs. No. Are we okay? Uh, first, make a written statement of the problem. So first of all, a problem has to be identified, and that is what designs are for. If there is no problem, then there, there is no there is no need for uh, any design, okay? But if we have problems, if there is a problem, and the problem needs to be solved, then that will come in, the design will come in. Are we okay? And uh, also, the purpose for which the machine is to be designed. So we need to, first of all, have a clear problem statement and then have a purpose for which the machine is being designed. Not that you are just designing something for the sake of designing. If you don't have a problem that you are, so, you are solving, you will not be able to, there, there will not be the need for any design, okay? So that is one aspect. If you're able to have a proper uh, description of the problem, then we have finished a very big part of the design process. Make a selection of a possible mechanism which will give the desired motion or group of motions. So when you have identified your problem, clearly stated it, you need to make selection of possible mechanism which may give the desired motion or the groups of motion. So in cases where we are designing a machine and we know that there may be some um, uh, elements of the machine, those are the parts of the machine which are going to be in motion, they will be moving. You want a certain motion. There are various mechanisms that you, you may combine to achieve that motion. And do not have a, a let me see a rigid rule that it should be this mechanism or that mechanism. You could have different combinations for you to get the work done. So all you have to do 
it will select the mechanism that which will give you the uh, the best results and also determine the forces acting on and the energy transmitted by each element of the machine okay when you are able to determine the um, uh, parts of the machine in terms of the mechanisms of the machine you also need to take into consideration the energy that is to be transmitted there the power that is to be transmitted and the force that will be acting on each of the elements of the design also you need to select the material best suited for each element of the machine so here you will have to go for a material that will be best suited for the machine that you are designing and there are various engineering materials that are available but some of them may not function well in some situations so you will have to go for the material that will best fit the machine that is being designed and then also determine the allowable or the design stresses considering all the factors that affect the strength of the machine part you need to do that and here it's mainly uh, going to apply the knowledge in strength of materials and all that is mainly on stresses okay so you should be able to determine those stresses considering all the factors that affect the strength of the machine and in this case uh, the allowable stress here you you are looking at the stress that is allowed that is the stresses within which the machine will be able to function safely okay that if the stresses in the material exceed that value then it is likely that it will fail and we don't want the stresses to exceed those values but it should be within a limit so you set limit for the stresses that will be within uh, within the uh, machine elements you need to determine the size of each member right so here you do some calculation to determine the size of each member with a view to prevent undue distortion or breakage or failure of the member under the applied load so you have already determined the applied load that is the amount of load this object is going to carry is this amount of load that we are setting on the object and if that is the case you need to have the proper size of the object or the machine element such that when that load is acting on it it will not crash it will not fail or distort are we okay so the sizing is very important and of course the size of the member may be dependent will be dependent on the amount of load that is going to carry it will be dependent on the material the strength of the material that is being used for that uh, uh, machine element okay uh, modify the machine element in part to agree with the experience and judgment and to facilitate manufacture okay are we here so in this case when you want to um, come up with the final design maybe you have done the sizing and everything but what about manufacturing you need to also take into consideration the ease of manufacture of that part the availability of um, a workshop or resources that will be used to manufacture the part okay it happens that you've come up with a very complex shape of the machine element it may function if it's being used but how do we produce it if there is no way that that part could be produced then the design will not be feasible are we okay so you also need to take into consideration how the um, uh, parts that we have we have been able to design how that machine could be manufactured and that should agree with some experiences and judgment so you the one doing the thing you 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 should be predisposed to certain information which will help you to have the right judgment as you uh, design the machine make 
assembly and detailed drawings of the machine with complete specifications for the materials and the manufacturing method. That is the accuracy, the surface finish, and other things. So here, as the designer or the engineer, you should be able to make assembly drawings, detailed drawings of that machine with complete specifications of the material, the manufacturing method. So the method to be, to be used in manufacturing, the designer should be able to state all of them, okay? And that will help the manufacturers. You may not necessarily be doing the manufacturing yourself, but you as the designer will be should be able to uh, give all those details to the manufacturer. So the drawings, the size of the component, the di proper dimensioning should be done, all right? And uh, the specification, the specifications for the various materials that are going to be used have to be done, all right? And then the method that should be used to manufacture because different manufacturing method may have different effects on the final product. And therefore, if your machine is being, you are designing the machine for a specific purpose, you need to be able to uh, state the appropriate manufacturing method so that it will not affect the outcome of the product when it's manufactured, okay? It will be wrong, to be wrong, it will be a wrong procedure to design a machine without the benefits of the past knowledge and experience about that machine. Hello. Are you here? The time is up, eh? Oh, our time is up. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, our time is up. Do you have any question so that uh, we can address before we finally go? Any question? Uh, <coughs> say the point three and then the point five. Point three and point five, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. What about it says that? De determine the forces acting um, in each of the machine elements. Mm -hmm. But say, after determining the forces and you realize, okay, this, the maximum force this machine element can withstand is say um, two newtons or two mega newtons. And you realize the uh, material which would be used wouldn't be able to withstand that amount of um, force. What are you going to do? Are you supposed to change the material? Are you supposed to uh, add more of that material? Okay. So you're yeah, determining the force here, all right? In the, in the material, let me put it that way, can, if, you, if, for instance, you are having the wood, right? Wood can withstand very high amount of force. If you have the appropriate size of that wood, are you okay? So in this particular case, what you are doing is to determine, for instance, you want to design, let's say you want to, one want to design something like a chair for somebody to sit on it. But when you are designing it, what is the weight of the person that will be sitting on it. You should be able to have an information on that. So that when we are sizing the, uh, the legs of the chair, you will have appropriate size, such that when the person sits on it, the legs will not break. Are you getting it? So the essence of determining the force that will be acting on it is to help the designer to help you make right judgment in terms of when you are sizing the object are you okay so that should come before you size so you see that in number six we have determined the size of each member and to determine the size of each member it will be dependent on the forces that will be acting on that those members are you okay The one asked the question, are you okay? Uh, yes, sir. Any other? Uh -huh. sir, is there a point where um, 
and you use a different procedure to get a particular asset to machine a particular chip. But there is a required A for machine. Can it cause you in the machine? But please come again. Assuming you are um, designing a chair, ah. but you are supposed to use chisel to make some particular key. Okay, so I'm trying to think that. Can there be a, um, a situation where you use a different machining method to obtain a shape cause fuel line in the machine? Okay, you mean, uh, is there a situation where you use a different machine me machining method for a particular thing that may cause fuel line in it? For well, a particular thing, yes. Sir. That's what you mean. Because at the point you said when we are designing we can use a particular procedure or machining method. So I'm asking, assuming if you use a different method to achieve the same shape, is there a probability of fuel work in the machine part? Yes, there may be. You know, in some parts, depending on the manufacturing method that you use, there may be some residual stress that will be developed in the material or cracks may be developed in the middle of the material. Are you okay? For instance, in cases where you want to, uh, let's say, hammer a project, uh, let's say you have a particular metal, eh? and say you want to reduce the diameter of the metal, and to reduce the diameter, you decided to try to hammer it to reduce the size. As you are hammering it, um, without taking into consideration the, my, the, the microstructure of that metal, you may end up creating some cracks in it you are getting it and let's say that you are going to use that uh, particular method that you, you you are trying to size now in, a, in an area where there will be high stresses uh, developed or there be high stress applic high stress applications you will see that because of that crack initiation within the material within the shortest time it will within a, uh, within a short time you see that it will just break or it will share off you are getting it so uh, in in judging which manufacturing method to use you need to be able to determine what that particular part is going to be used what is going to be used for okay then you will determine that okay, okay. In, in some cases you may have to forge so forge a part they will put it in in a, in a furnace to heat it up, to be red hot, then they hammer it. The essence of forging it is try to reduce the uh, let's say residual stress that may be built up within the material. And in some cases too, one may do casting, okay? They will melt the metal, have a, 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 I mean a, a mold box, and then they will cast it and when you cast it in that case you have a complete material that comes out of the casting the only thing is to do some few shaping so that you have the actual size of the object all these things are determined based on what is going to be used for in some cases we also have now we have the uh, some manufacturing processes like the uh, we have elect ele electro discharge uh, machining there are some cases even now in the modern day, some parts could be printed 3D, using 3D printers to print, okay, by using powder metals. But you see that uh, in such uh, cases, though the parts could be printed, but the strength, overall strength of the part could not be as the one that is, that is casted. Are you okay? So if you are going to use it for high stress applications and then maybe you 3D print the part and then you send it, it may end up failing prematurely as compared to when it's casted. Because when it's casted, all the material, like the material is melting and when you pour into the, uh, the cast and the, the mold and it, 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 like, uh, it dries or let's say solidifies. When it solidifies, you see that the microstructure and everything is fused together perfectly. But in cases where they are using powder metal to and 3D printing to use to do it, you see that there will be some uh, discontinuity in terms of the flow of the microstructure. 
and that may end up weakening the material. Okay, so it all depends on what you are going to be you are going to use it for. If it's high stress applications, you you should choose a suitable uh, uh, manufacturing method for this. And if it doesn't require so much stress to that one too is there. But in all, you should ensure that you use the manufacturing method that will be cheap and also it will fit the application of that particular part. Are you okay? Sir, assuming we are designing um, a trust system, sir, do you have to factor in the location? I'm asking this before. I designed a trust system for a particular construction of a uh, bridge. I'm supposed to factor in the location. I'm asking this because as if we've calculated for the maximum stress the trust can uh, withstand, but I will not factor in the location. So when the trusses are fixed at a um, location where there is rapid decrease and increase in temperature. So I think that that can also affect uh, the damage of the machine element in the trust system. Yes, so that has to be considered. Okay. And, and when, mm -hmm. when we are going to use in such areas where there will be rapid increase in temperature, and there are some areas to where there is some, uh, let's say, uh, is like, the, let's say close to the sea, and where there is salt, like the salt that may be sprayed on the material and all that, which could cause corrosion and all that. Mm -hmm. We need to consider that that should, um, um, that should help you to judge your material selection for that purpose. So in your case, where you, you said there is rapid uh, uh, expansion and contract, con contraction of the object because of changes in temperature, you should select a material that will be able to withstand that, okay? Okay, so do you also factor in cost? Of course, cost, I've been mentioning it over and over again. Cost should be factored okay. in. Are you okay? Yes, sir. Yes, cost should be factored in. If not, people cannot buy the product because it may be too expensive because, for instance, let's say that uh, you want to uh, make a table, okay? A number of tables that we have been using. And one will go for copper to make the table. Well, you could use the copper to make a complete table. It will still work, isn't it? But at the yeah. end, you will see that um, it will be too expensive. Though it will set the purpose, it will be too expensive. And you could have used a cheaper material to do the same thing. And it will still do this, this I mean, without any problem. So why should you go for very expensive material when there are cheaper ones? So always, you have to consider cheaper options. Yes, any other question? I think our time is fast spent, so we can end here. Thank you very much for coming. I will also make available this video so those who uh, could not connect can get access to them. Thank you very much and God bless you.